Well, lumps and shots are Eilish Cancelline. Eilish, a star at the moment in your second season, and obviously with Claire, and on top of that with Adelaide Crows. But you're very welcome, and thanks a million for talking to us. No problem at all. Thanks for having me on. So obviously, Eilish, we're into the thick of it now and, and pushing on into the rounds from it. Obviously, you've settled in well from it. There have been good wins. And, and for yourself, I suppose, you probably found a big difference in the second season now and, and how more comfortable, I suppose, you are. Yeah, um, obviously, getting back, you know, we, the Irish girls, all of us kind of had a very interrupted pre-season in terms of not being able to get back in time and stuff. So initially getting back, it was um, a struggle to try and, you know, find routine and form and get back into, you know, the lifestyle I've been out here. Um, but I, I guess the last couple of weeks and as the rounds have pushed on and moved on, it's starting to feel a lot more settled um, in Adelaide and in, you know, the lifestyle of been getting back used to normality and, and getting back into the, the training routine and, and, and the game. So, um, yeah, round seven was last weekend and, and heading into round eight this weekend against Bulldogs. Um, obviously had a bit of a defeat last weekend against Melbourne. Um, so we're looking to try and, you know, make make that right this weekend against Bulldogs. But um, no, it's like settling into, it just feels a lot more settled into the squad and like you know people and you know the run of the place and you know like the run of, of everything and how the club works and stuff. So, you know, all that side of things is, is, has come second nature this, this time around. But always as a professional athlete and as you know um county players you you put pressure on yourself to be better and you know try and be better every season and make more of an impact so that's always in the back of your mind and I suppose you never really have the freedom of just going out and play you're always kind of under pressure but on yourself to try and you know have a good performance and make make an impact on the squad so um, well, you certainly yeah, made a name for yourself last year, Eilish, and you've continued doing <laughs> that this year, but you had a bit of a break on the sidelines or the boundaries, mm -hmm. I suppose, as they're calling them in AFLW. Um, how have you been since that um, head injury and that concussion? Yeah, no, all good. Thank God I haven't had any side effects at all from it, which is which is great. But um, I was like, typical, the, the, just as I did my first concussion in sport, it had to be just a week after a new protocol was brought in place of 12 days. So I was kind of just I was kicking myself a little bit the the timing of it, but um I guess it's for the right reasons. You know, you have to mind your head. It's it's more a long term thing than anything. And um, but I've been quite fortunate since that. You know, pretty much three four days afterwards, I had, I was symptom free and was good to go and um was slowly introduced back into light exercise and training. So since then it's been it's been playing sailing really with my head so so all good thank god and would that have been the first time you've had a, a head injury like that obviously it's a really physical game out there Irish, but that would that have been the first incident yeah i like i think i may have had one as a child but i like, again i don't really remember what it's definitely the first one i can really remember and the first one i've had from sport so it was definitely a strange experience and there's i think about four or five minutes um from that game where i have no idea i, I have no memory of it and i don't think i'll ever get it back but um, so a very strange experience trying to piece everything back together again after the game and stuff and trying to remember um, what had happened and, and where I was, that kind of thing. So, yeah, um, strange experience. Your sister <laughs> would be familiar with from, from rugby and on the international stage. For sure, sure for sure. You have a few examples, but to experience it yourself, maybe you can yeah. be in her shoes as well now. You can, you've more yeah, to compare. Yeah, that's definitely, yeah. Like, I with her she used to get quite emotional with her concussions so like I would always see the side effects from her or what she if or what um she experienced but I uh, luckily enough I didn't get too much of that um it was just the memory loss was the was the I suppose the scariest thing for me of just losing that that time in between where I have no idea I was there in body but not in mind and the coaches were funny because they were saying because I asked them I was like what was I saying like what was I doing like was I normal or what like and they were like all you kept asking was could I go back on could I go back on like that was the only thing I've seen to them <laughs> it's like yeah that sounds about right in fairness <laughs> a true football and attitude yeah um, exactly I suppose with the the link and you know LGFA and obviously with the AFLW what have you found I suppose has been a tough or was a tough change over when you started last season at it um I guess just the physicality of the game and just the way it's played um while the game is pretty similar skill wise and you know attributes all that kind of thing um like bar the ball and, and the tackling um just the general way they play the game is very different to how we would play Gaelic football back home so kind of trying to learn those structures and, and their um style of game you know has been definitely something I've struggled with and still I'm struggling with to to get fully grasped with so um it's probably been one of the hardest things for me like the skills and stuff 
yeah, well, I, I put hours and hours in my first season to, you know, to get them right and off both feet and both hands and stuff. So like that paid off pretty quickly because, you know, having the background of Gaelic football really helped in that regards. But just the gameplay and you'll only learn that by playing and, you know, it's, you don't get that many games in AFLW. I think like um, we haven't, we were lucky that we have nine rounds this year, but obviously last year got cut short and the year before then it was only like a seven round um seven round comp so you don't get too many games and too many um chances to you know get exposed to the game and how how it's played so um just trying to quickly progress that learning is is hard and um the plan is to actually stay in and on and play the club league that runs here in South Australia um for maybe a month or so after the AFLW and hopefully that will help with my you know development and learning of the game and you know gameplay and stuff. And Ada, did you play a game with that league? I thought I heard about that. that maybe yeah. Before you were coming back from the... Yeah. Yeah, I did. So once I was cleared to play and stuff, that was my first game back. Um, and I played with West Adelaide, who I'm aligned to for the South Australian League because it coincides. They run at the same time, which is actually a great thing for our squad because any of the girls that miss out on selection, they get an opportunity to play a game of football, which is, you know, it's vital at this time of year and stuff to keep freshness and keep match fitness. Um, so I was fortunate enough to play at Westies and we got our we got our first win of the of the Sandfall. Um and in fairness, the girls were lovely and the coaches, everything like they really got around me and they were really supportive because I literally walked into the change room and I didn't know it's like I knew one one of the girls um that played that plays with crows with me as well. But other than that, I didn't know a single girl. So um bit daunting to go into an environment like that especially in a sport that you're not like overly comfortable with yeah. um but no in fairness they, they made it very easy and you know um really got around me which was good and there's obviously I know with the the singing at the end of the games there's a brilliant yeah spirit to be seen on and off the pitch but what's yeah. the sport like Eilish from let's say dietetics like are there dietitians there to support eating and for strength and conditioning do you feel there's just yeah. a jump in the professionalism of it Oh, this is a huge, that's a huge jump. And this year with the cutbacks actually ended up in a good thing for us, you know, with COVID, all the cutbacks, um, because we've now got the men's SNC team. They're now working on both the men's and the women's AFL team with Crows. So like they, they're incredible. Like they, they just like, it's, they're so professional and they just know exactly how to get the best out of the girls. And it's so individualized. It's not just, you know, your general one for all program that you're handed out at the start of the year to work off. Yeah. Everything is so individualized. You work towards your goal and, and that kind of thing. And even in the off season programming, you know, second to none, it was unbelievable. Like the fitness levels that I gained, even in the off season while I was at home. And it was solely because of the programs that they were sending me on. So like so fortunate to have that at our disposal. And it's just absolutely next level in comparison to what we'd have back home. It's, you know, ladies football or camogie. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like there's, there's dietitians, like we, we get our DEXA scans, our body fat percentage. We actually only had one last week just to, you know, keep everything on track and see how you're progressing throughout the season. Um, so yeah, it's very, very professional and like, it's, it's an absolute joy to, to be in that environment and be part of it. And Ailish, you were mentioning that obviously when you went home, you were continuing on with training, but I know yourself and Emer were doing a few gym sessions through the garage window. So you definitely made things work. You weren't going to be standing back idle. Yeah, I know I couldn't because I knew the girls out here were living a pretty normal life. So I knew that if I was going to come back and, and play for, for this season that I had to come back in decent shape. And the pressure was on because like pretty much normality hit Adelaide um probably may or june after that so they had a really good run in at their their trainings and stuff and i knew i was going to be a bit delayed coming back to adelaide so um i always had that goal and that focus to aim for coming back that you know i had to come back in some some shape or form <laughs> and Elish, i suppose a tough decision to make of coming home and for all the irish girls i think you know there were five irish girls out there in 2019 but obviously coming back last year it was it was a tough decision to make for you and I suppose with visas there seemed to be a lot of different issues to, to sort out yeah yeah it was a tough decision to make in the end to actually go home to Ireland um because like it wasn't that bad over here like I had you know I had my mother on the on the other end of the phone telling me how bad it was in Ireland and Europe and how bad COVID is and I just didn't understand I didn't know what she was talking about because we didn't have it over here in Adelaide especially and there was bits in Melbourne and Sydney but in Adelaide it was normality that there was no real restriction or anything like that so I didn't really understand the chaos and then um, it, I only kind of started to understand when my first flight got cancelled home and then my second one got cancelled and then I was like okay maybe there is a bit of an issue here 
and then the third one finally went through you know it was a it was a long a long trip home but it finally you know got got me back to Dublin and um I think it was then I kind of realized the the extent of how bad it actually was because I remember Emer and my brother Keith drove up um in two separate cars and just threw me the keys of the second car and I had to drive from Dublin to home after I think 48 hours of travel and not even able to get a hug off the two of them after having seen not having seen them in I think over like nine months so I think that kind of was like the the real eye opener of how serious it was um back here but again I was like looking back hindsight's a great thing I was like I probably should have stayed here because I would have had a more you know a better prep for the season I would have had more normality in life um I wouldn't you know have gone through lockdown after lockdown been back in Ireland but um it's easy to say that now when when you see it um from the other end but um yeah and and resilient character resilient exactly (laughs) it's built a lot of resilience that's for sure and it has done for many people. Then, obviously there's been a huge influx of Irish players coming over and, and inter-county players like yourself what difference have you seen in it have you enjoyed playing against them so far in the first seven rounds yeah no it's it's been good it's it's nice to hear the Irish accent on the field um because all you're all you're used to is listen to Aussie especially here in in Adelaide because I'm the only Irish so I don't get to hear the accent too often so getting to hear it a bit is good um the standard though has increased so much in terms of even um, the Aussie girls themselves and the Irish girls and how well they're playing and how much of an impact they're having in the games. Like it's it's incredible to see that which, you know, um such short exposure to a professional game that, you know, they're picking up the skills and, and the gameplay so quickly. So it's an absolute credit to the girls themselves and also to, you know, their grassroots of the LGFA and, and their sporting backgrounds too. So um yeah, the standard is is rising very, very quickly um over here. Um and even the, you know some of the younger Aussie girls that are coming through it's it's going to get harder and harder to get um to get game time and get selected it's it's really um the standard is really going to go through the roof in the next couple of years I think and I suppose there's been great development even from a point of view of Irish players at cross coders and you know mm-hmm. players can have had that chance but Breed Stack had come over this year and obviously against Adelaide Crows a yeah. serious injury at the start but um, would, would you have been near that incident, um, Ailish, or from that pre-season training? Yeah, I was actually right beside it when it happened. Um, I was like the next line of um, attack when it, when it happened. So, like, so unfortunate for Breed because she actually, I was only playing half that game because I was being monitored because I, you know, just from the interrupted training. And so I played the second half, but I was literally just watching for the first half and I just pretty much just watched her and her game and I was so impressed with how well she had done with such limited training with the squad. I think she'd only like trained for like a week or two at that stage and she just slotted in so well and so seamlessly and like it was just so unfortunate that, you know, the injury happened and and that it, it ended up ruling her out for, for this season. But um no, like she was she was playing so well and it would have been really exciting to watch her and Cora play together again and um but hopefully um at some stage, she'll get to make her AFLW debut. Um, yeah. and hopefully not against the Crows. <laughs> getting to hear the Irish accent, we're getting to see the Irish players. But I suppose from a positional point of view, Willis, it obviously is, the game is different, but you would have started yeah. off as a forward last year and half yeah. back more so really this season, isn't it? Yeah, so I've, I've pretty much been everywhere and anywhere because like with Gaelic football, I'd be... I'd kind of be half forward, mid. I'd be kind of pretty versatile as it would be anyway. So it's kind of working out the same here that they like they can see the skills that I have, but they're not really exactly sure where to put me. So like I've been I've been in half back, I've been in half forward, I've been in the mids, I've been in the wings. It's kind of literally everywhere and anywhere. And it kind of depends on on who we're playing positionally wise and and I guess who's available with injury and that kind of thing. So it's probably a good thing that I am a versatile player because that means, you know, I can fill in a few slots if we are, you know, low on numbers. But on the other hand, then it kind of makes it hard for me to have a focus and to actually, um, you know, yeah, put my focus into one position. Thing. And yeah, and, and you know, learn the structure for that because it, with every position, there comes a different structure. Um, so as a half forward, the structures are different to what you'd be if you were a wing. So, and I struggle try, trying to remember all the structures as it is. So trying to remember every single structure going because I could be in any position is, you know, a bit challenging at times. But um, Doc is great. Our coach, Matthew Clark, he, he literally just says, look, they're just a guideline. Once you're out there, just play, just play footy. And that's literally what he said, says to us once we go out onto the field. So um, he's probably one of the most relaxed people I've ever 
come across in my life, especially as a coach. It's very, very different to what your, you know, your normal GAA coaches were. Yeah. They'd be um <laughs> they'd be trying to rile you up inside the dressing room and you'd there'd be hurlies flying or there'd be tables been banged, that kind of thing. But yeah. no, Doc is very calm. He's a complete opposite. He kind of just wants you to go out there and enjoy it, which is nice. And I think that's working for you, Eilish, because you can see in the matches you're bursting through with pace, but maybe being relaxed is giving you that freedom to go and take it on. You know, you're well able to get the scores, but I suppose you're not feeling like you have to hang back. If you are in the halfbacks, it's still in a tackle role. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like, that's, that's the thing about it. Like no matter where you are in the field, you kind of have the license to, you know, just do whatever the ball decides to do because it's such an unpredictable game. Like the structures are there for a guideline, but at the end of the day, it's an oval ball. It's never going to bounce where it's supposed to bounce. So the, the game becomes very unpredictable. So you kind of just have to go with it and go with the flow of the game. And I guess that was something that I found a little bit weird and hard to, um, to go with initially, but um, getting there slowly but surely. Yeah. And Eilish, I know mathematically there's obviously all these different permutations of how to get into the last six and how to push through yeah. in Melbourne, it might help. But I suppose has yeah. the focus always been from the beginning, you know, just what opposition is in front of you for that round and the end goal will kind of bring itself along. Is that still kind of the same message you're getting? Yeah, yeah, that's been pretty much what it's been for for um for our entire season like uh, yeah like you obviously when the fixtures got announced for the final three you kind of probably looked ahead a little bit because it was the first time you know we hadn't to wait each week for the fixture to be announced because of COVID um so yeah we, we probably looked a little bit ahead in terms of what was coming but um I think our major focus always has to be the game that's coming next because with the AFLW comp it can be so unpredictable at times like you can you, you'll play a team that you're expected to beat and they'll come out and they'll have an absolute like ripper game and you're just there and you're like well we left that one behind us yeah. so like you can't really overlook any game that you're you're going into and like we like Bulldogs have been going really really well in their last couple of games so, and like traditionally they wouldn't have been a top six team but they're going really well so we can't look past them at all and like the Collingwood game is obviously our last game and we are a little bit under the pump in terms of trying to win the last two games to you know you know, get our final spot, but we can't look beyond this weekend because we need to get a win for this weekend. And then after that, then we'll we'll play it by ear and see where we sit on the table and hopefully the numbers add up for us. And Eilish, as we've said, it's your second season out there, but what players have stood out to you, I suppose, are big names, even from the Crows and then from the other teams that you've kind of found top opposition, I suppose? Yeah, well, look, it's, it's hard to look past Erin Phillips. Like, she's... She's just an incredible athlete. Like I'm privileged to be able to play with her. Um, in fairness, like our squad is full of like brilliant players. Um, overall, so like it's such a hard squad to break into because there's so many like good players that are so underrated. But um, obviously Erin is just outstanding and is an outstanding athlete and stands out in every single game that we play. Like she'll just, especially when you need her most, she'll come up with a goal or she'll come up with you know an amazing mark or something like that. She's just one of those players that you're just so fortunate to have on your team and is a great leader she would have played um, on the field. Well, um, basketball professionally, wouldn't she? Or, uh, yeah, yeah, she would have. And she played in the Olympics as well with, with Australia. So um, she's good pretty um, <laughs> high performer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and obviously having Chelsea as well, our captain, it, you know, she's such a, such a strong influence on the ground. Like you, you really notice when she's there, she's just, she just she flies for most of the game. She doesn't even spend time on the ground. She just runs and jumps everywhere, and she just gets a hand in where she shouldn't. Yeah. Um, so like the two of them are just are leading from the front and always have and and always will. So, um, and then I guess Sarah Allen down back. She probably gets the least amount of recognition of our whole team, probably because she's back first of all, and secondly yeah. because she's just so laid back about everything that she does. It's you know nothing is fancy she just gets like everything done and she's like an absolute rock behind at the back for us so she's having a great season this year for us um she's really stepping up to the mark and she's she's still only pretty young at this stage she's in her early 20s so yeah. she has definitely a big career ahead of her um and Ailish, so yeah, they've probably... been seen from in the play as well you obviously get on well as a team but through the middle you're very strong and it's just it's not mm -hmm. even like a worked out play there just seems to be a great drive coming through and a lot of pace and power that from the back yeah like Sarah Allen, it's the same idea yeah like yeah we've an absolutely like great midfield like Aaron runs in and out of the midfield as well has been in the fours and you've got Ebony Marinoff and and obviously Hatchie as well like the, the two of them are just a powerhouse in the mids they get so many touches and disposals in the game they're just constantly you know 
creating havoc for the other midfielders. So to have, you know, two of those and then Aaron running and, and the rest just at your disposal is it's incredible. Like it's they're like they, I can't speak highly enough of the entire squad because they're just like I just can't get over how committed and dedicated they, you know, and talented that they are. Like it's just it's a breath of fresh air to walk into that and be part of that. And you know, there's such genuine care for each other as well within the squad. Um, not just, you know, in the um in the team, it's also outside of it as well. So, you know, that makes a huge difference to everything. You know, if you've created a bond outside of foot football as well, you know, it makes all the difference when you, you know, you actually step onto the field with each other as well. And there's been a big effort made, I suppose, just to to help players settle in, but especially to kind of celebrate players and even with the pride round, the indigenous round. Yeah. Like we've seen a lot, I think, of um, I suppose the continuity you're trying to push the game to new levels like from a professional point of view Irish, but definitely you're the only Irish out there and you know you're saying you really feel part of it in the Crows yeah. there's not kind of a separation of even nationalities there yeah no there's absolutely no separation at all which is great and um, even on that like yesterday we had training and Chelsea organised um, like scrunchies and hats and paint, face paint for St. Patrick's Day, all green stuff. Like I, it was just, um, it was just it, like, it was so nice. Like it actually made my day um, when I saw all the girls like having something green on them, whether it was just the face paint or having the scrunchies or some of them were even in tutus, the green tutus. Um, and like even our SNC coach had painted his beard green. Like it, just seeing that, like it, it was such a nice feeling, and like I was so appreciative that you know they made that effort to make me feel welcome on you know St Patrick's Day for a day to celebrate our Irishness and you know our culture. So it was it was really nice of them to do that and and feel part of that and feel like so welcomed that they you know and humble that they did that for me. And like you were saying with the with the pride rounds and the indigenous rounds, like it just they really are you know kind of ahead of the curve in terms of that, like because. A lot, it's obviously um, a big community and the AFLW would be involved in Pride Round and stuff. So like it's obviously, um, you know, should be celebrated and it's great that it can be celebrated on such a big stage because, you know, the AFLW does get generate quite a lot of support over here and mm. even back home now at the moment. So it's it's great to see that, you know, it's been publicised and especially with the Indigenous Round as well, that, you know, they're celebrating their own culture as well. So um yeah, it's great to see. Four, um, there are four new teams this year in the AFLW. Have you seen that they've kind of come in to develop, I suppose, quickly? Or do you see there's still a good bit of a gap, you know, that they have to make up to maybe catch up to the Crows or teams? Yeah. Established? Yes. So last year there there has been a bit of a there has been a bit of a gap, but it is starting to close because you know the the academies and underage AFL um academies are really starting to come. So the gap is closing it's still a little bit there it was probably a bit of a stretch to have four new teams in one season it probably um you know was it was it diluted the talent a little bit too much I reckon maybe two teams would be you know enough at any stage to bring in um there's still a couple more teams left to come in but I reckon they'll they'll do it a little bit slower next time around because it's just it dilutes it a little bit too much and there's ends up in a lot of movement between players and, and squads so um they're getting there. There is a lot of progress being made, um, but still probably not quite the level yet um, where they need to be. And Eilish, obviously you have Bulldogs coming up now at the, you know, round eight and you've Collingwood mm -hmm. for the last match of it. But I know everyone's eagerly tuning in and definitely at home in Clare as well. Is there any message you have for them at home? <laughs> um, well, I hope they're all Crows fans, first of all. <laughs> um, and secondly, oh God, I'm... Hopefully we can just get a decent performance because I think I think that's kind of the most important thing for us. I think um, once we get our performance right in the day, I think um, the result will look after itself. So I think against Melbourne, we didn't perform. So the result obviously didn't go our way. Um, so hopefully against Bulldogs, we can kind of get back on track, get back into momentum and kind of swing it our way again and, and hopefully get a result. So I think it will be a good game. Bulldogs will really put it up to us. So yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, tune in, I guess, and hopefully we can provide everyone with a good performance. Brilliant. Well, Ailish, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us, and we hope to see you in the last six as well. No problem. Hopefully we'll be there as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a million, Ailish. Shall no see problem. See ya.